good morning uh, everyone i hope uh, you all are doing uh, well so uh, today just uh, we are going to have a discussion of um, our surgical team uh, optimum protection during uh, this uh, corona pandemic so we all know this uh, covid 19 pandemic uh, is on its uh, peak uh, and uh, becoming uh, uh, the priority actually to protect uh, all health workers uh, including our operation theater team because uh, we all are ultimate uh, uh, team members or uh, health workers uh, we are going to uh, face all these uh, patients uh, so this presentation uh, will bring you the latest uh, information uh, data and recommendation for person uh, in the operating room as well as in the hospital also to minimize the risk of uh, covid infection during and after the surgery or hospital procedures uh i shall include uh, five elements uh, so use of uh, personal protective equipment uh, this is one of the most uh, heard uh, uh, word actually after corona uh, during this time ppe also it is called uh, another uh, important thing is anesthesia and intubation risk uh, specific operative risk issues after operation recovery uh, take overs and going home what should be done to keep our family safe so before i start my presentation uh, this i would like to show you this uh, slide uh, this is one of the another common debate uh, how long this uh, sars cov2 virus uh, cell survive on different places so uh, this is a little bit complicated slide uh, but if you look at uh, c that is the the downmost that's a half life of uh, this viable virus is so in aerosol form uh, it is almost 1 uh, to 2 hours uh, copper is one of the metal actually where the this sars cov2 virus uh, they remain alive for very short time uh, cardboard it is almost 3 uh, to 4 hours uh, stainless steel is 6 hours and plastic is the highest one so 6 to 8 hours so if you look at the first one the a slide in the plastic at the end of almost 3 days you know we can find the strains of uh, sars cov2 viruses that's a brown slide okay it means the plastics are one of the most dangerous thing and we must uh, be careful using that plastic uh, substances actually uh, in our hospital and uh, at home also so use of uh, pp is uh, it is recommended by a cdc uh, for every operative procedures performed on patients with uh, confirmed covid-19 infection or when there is a suspicion but recently now we have decided that our all patients who are undergoing for surgery uh, we should uh, use uh, pp is uh, i'll just uh, get you details n95 respirators uh, we have heard a lot about uh, this n95 mask also and uh, which gives the almost highest level of protection almost 95 to 98% uh, and we must use this n95 respirators in all major surgeries uh, we must dispose uh, all respirators and uh, face mask uh, properly that i'll show you in the video and we must perform proper hand hygiene after discarding the respirator and face mask now this is uh, general uh, slide actually to uh, make you understand the pp recommendation this is only not for surgery but in general you know wherever in the hospital so the first one green one patient care for uh, patients not suspected for covid 19 so it is a normal patient patient doesn't have any symptoms but when you need to examine or when you when you need to stay nearby to the patient for example all ambulatory clinics emergency department acute care uh, units intensive care units and uh, procedural areas like surgery or endoscopy room we just need to wear only surgical ear loop mask remember this patient is not a covid 19 and you just you are going to stay with the patient 
either for examination. That's all. The yellow one, patient is suspected or positive for COVID-19. It means patient is having COVID symptoms or patient taste is pending or it is positive. Then we need to have at least eye protection, face shield, surgical mask, gown and gloves. And the last one, aerosol generating procedure. It means our proper surgery. Uh, during uh, any general surgery, general anesthesia or any procedures where you need to endoscope, bronchoscope, we need to follow very strict protocols of using a N95 respirator and face shield, eye protection, gown and gloves. In the next coming videos, I will show you how to put on this gown and uh, PPEs and how to put off also. And make sure that hand hygiene is required upon the entry and exit, regardless point of care. It means wherever, if you are seeing the patient before the seeing patient and after the seeing patient, hand hygiene is very important. If you are going to see any patient in emergency or in OPD, after each and every patient, before and after, we need to do proper hand hygiene. So, this is uh, called uh, PPE donning or also put on. Uh, how to put on personal protective equipment. Now, this is a simple video actually to demonstrate. If you are engaging in surgical procedures, then we have to make sure that certain steps in this video we have to follow in a sterile way. But this video is just to make you understand. This video also was long actually. I have concise this video, uh, but it will give you a good idea. The donning process is conducted under the guidance and supervision of a trained observer who confirms visually that all personal protective equipment is serviceable and has been donned successfully. No personal items such as jewelry, watches, cell phones, pagers, or pens should be brought into the patient room. Visually inspect the personal protective equipment ensemble to be worn to ensure that it is in serviceable condition and that all required personal protective equipment and supplies are available. And that the sizes selected are correct for the healthcare provider. Try not to touch the floor or other areas with your hands while putting the boot covers on. If you do, disinfect your hands before putting your inner gloves on. Ensure the gown is sized properly and large enough to allow unrestricted freedom of movement. If available, a gown with thumb hooks helps to secure the cuff of the gown over the inner glove to help ensure there is not a gap between the glove and the cuff. Tie the gown securely, but in a manner that it can be easily untied when you begin the doctoring process. Hold the respirator in the palm of your hand with the strap space in the floor. Place the N95 respirator on your face, covering your nose and mouth. Pull the bottom strap up and over the top of your head, and put it behind your head below your ears. Take the upper strap and put it behind your head towards the crown of your head. Mold the nose piece of the respirator over the bridge of your nose to obtain a tight seal. When putting on these gloves, make sure that the cuffs extend as far up your arm as possible and are over the cuff of your gown. Put on a full face shield over the N95 respirator and surgical hood to provide additional protection to the front and sides of the face, including skin and eyes. The healthcare worker should be comfortable and able to extend the arms, bend at the waist, and go through a range of motions to ensure there is sufficient range of movement while all areas of the body remain covered. A mirror in the room can be useful for the healthcare worker while donning personal protective equipment. I just want to say again, uh, this was a video, uh, just demonstration only. If you, any of you are uh, engaging in surgical theater, like, you know, or endoscopy, just 
please follow all sterile steps uh, you know uh, so next video is uh, PPE doffing that is how to put off uh, you know all PPEs Grasp the outside of the boot cover and pull down toward your ankle. Then, lift the boot cover over your heel, pull it off your foot, and dispose of it correctly. Pay special attention so that you don't contaminate or tear the inner blood. If you do see a tear, hole, or signs of contamination of the inner gloves, disinfect with EPA-registered disinfectant wipes or alcohol-based hand rub. Then, Remove the inner gloves, making sure not to contaminate your bare hands. Once the gloves are off, perform hand hygiene with alcohol-based hand rub on your hands. Then, put on a new set of gloves up to the edge of the sleeve. Tilt your head forward slightly. Grab the strap at the temples and pull it forward and over your head. Tilt your head slightly. Grasp at the crown of the head and use one hand to pull the hood forward, away from the body, and off the head. Pull the gown down and away from the sides of your body. Once the gown is off your shoulders, roll the exposed side of the gown inward until it's a tight ball. Dispose of it. First, disinfect your gloves, using the same product as in previous stages. Hold one of your wrists so that your thumb points up. Pinch that glove and lift at the wrist. Then, roll it down until the glove is completely off and a ball in the palm of the other hand. Then, slide a finger down and inside the glove on the other hand and pull it off until it's balled around the first glove. Dispose of the gloves. Then, put on a fresh pair of gloves and you're ready for the next step. Tilt your head forward. Then, use two hands to grab the bottom strap. Pull to the sides, then over your head. Next, use both hands to grab the upper strap. Pull to the sides, then over your head. Go ahead and perform hand hygiene. So thank you very much uh, for uh, your patience. Uh, the main purpose of uh, doffing, uh, we have to make sure that we should not touch uh, any part of our uh, body uh, for any contamination. And also we should not uh, contaminate other areas of uh, uh, hospital environment. This is the example of a PPE requirement. Uh, like, you know, if you have uh, uh, any general surgery, like, you know, if we consider two surgeons, three nurses, one anesthesiologist and one cleaning person, then we need approximately 14 gloves, seven gowns, seven face shield, and seven masks. Uh, that is, again, uh, during any endoscopy, uh, if you consider one endoscopist, one nurse, anesthesiologist, and one cleaning person, then we need eight gloves, four gowns, four face shield, and four masks. This need of PPE may be different according to type of uh, surgery, free gynecology, or orthopedic, or general surgery, cardiac surgery. Uh, according to the hospital protocols and also surgeon's preferences. Now, this is one of the most important uh, aspect, uh, intubation and anesthesia risk, uh, because uh, uh, aerosol uh, droplet transmission of COVID-19 is uh, much of a uh, worrying part, actually. So all the surgical procedures, uh, including intubation, tracheostomy, endoscopy, uh, evacuation of uh, pneumoperitoneum and aspiration of body fluids. Uh, these all surgeries that need more attention. Uh, the most important aspect like surgeons and other persons who are not required for intubation should not remain in the operation theater. They should wait outside uh, till the intubation procedure is been over. Uh, anesthesiologist at the highest risk during the surgery because of intubation, extubation and uh, positive pressure ventilation. Uh, that carries the highest risk of arousal uh, producing procedures. 
so spinal epidural and nerve blocks are preferred over uh, ga whenever it is possible but we must prepare for emergency uh, airway management with enhanced pp so this is uh, the on the left hand uh, that is what we use in cardiac surgery it is enhanced pp n95 mask uh, three ply mask white cover that is a uh, tyvek uh, suit it's a very special material from uh, dupont company uh, two gloves face shield and eye goggles but certain uh, hospitals uh, you know small clinics where uh, this kind of uh, suit is not available at least we must use uh, proper gown two gloves face shield and gloves uh, and n95 mask without uh, at least uh, this uh, thing we should not uh, conclude we should not induce any patient so we have to minimize the number of staff in or uh, during intubation and extubation uh, we must uh, follow the donning uh, and doffing procedures uh, as cdc guidelines i already mentioned that preferably most experienced anesthesiologist should uh, do uh, intubation uh, video laryngoscope is always preferable because you know it it makes you that you remain a little bit away from the patient and we must avoid awake intubation because there is a highest risk of a strong cough reflexes during awake anesthesia so avoid that we must consider the rapid general anesthesia that is uh, also called rsi so 5 minute uh, oxygenation rapidly acting muscle relaxant like succinylcholine or high dose of uh, rocinorin we should avoid mask ventilation because it can increase aerosol production manual ventilation uh, is required then we should do with less pad volume hme filter is uh, one of uh, uh, important aspect of all anesthesia circuit so almost 99.99% protective uh, it remains uh, we need to use two hme filter so one is uh, between uh, the endotracheal tube and the y piece of a breathing system and one uh, at uh, uh, at uh, the gas uh, this one uh, ambu bag uh, expiratory tube and machine so we can see here in the figure and if you use to use a gas monitoring line it has to be after the hme filter so uh, we also uh, should avoid uh, circuit uh, disconnection as much as uh, possible suction of uh, aerosol during procedure is uh, maximum during that time and also extubation has to be carried out under enhanced pp so once the anesthesiologist uh, normally enter the operation room uh, they are supposed to leave only after proper extubation of the patient a minimum of a 1 hour is planned between cases of uh, to allow ward staff to send the patient back to the icu ward now this is uh, important for uh, volume centric uh, procedures uh, you know like for example if you are planning to operate on two hernia patients uh, at least we should follow this uh, protocols uh, we must conduct through decontamination of all surfaces as i already shown that uh, aerosol remains in the air for at least one or two hours so we must clean everything all unused items on the drug tray and airway trolley should be assumed to be contaminated and so it should be discarded and after confirm covid 19 cases a hydrogen peroxide vaporizer should be used to decontaminate the theater if transport of the patient is suspected to have covid 19 infection to an outside area or icu then we must hand off this patient properly to the minimum uh, persons all persons who are going to hand off they should wear personal protective equipment as recommended by cdc and if you are planning for other surgery it is always uh, recommended to change the operation theater scrubs between the two cases this is uh, most important as uh, you know we all are um, health worker uh, you know important person for this kind of patient management but at least it is our duty to you know keep our family also uh, safe and healthy so hand hygiene is very important as i said uh, frequent hand hygiene be alert that you know this viral contamination of surface is known means of transmission of infection so whenever you just leave from home try to avoid uh, you know putting on extra stuff 
like personally i don't carry keys uh, wallet uh, 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 any other rings any nothing i i don't carry anything personally actually so we should all avoid everything uh, we should keep our hand sanitizer in our car also if we supposed to use uh, for atm or vending machine petrol pump or any shopping you know we should use gloves uh, we must clean our cell phone frequently because uh, it is a glass and plastic and this covid uh, corona virus remain you know for a longer time on that so we should uh, use uh, uh, have phone sanitizers frequently uh ziploc bag can be used for some time but uh, we personally we don't recommend it for using for longer time because plastic is another good source of uh, corona virus so the best thing is to keep cleaning your phones in between uh we must uh, remove all clothes and wash uh, them upon arrival at the home uh, taking proper bath with soap and shampoo is uh, mandatory for everyone irrespective of doctor or anything whenever we are just coming from outside you know we should do that uh, consider reducing physical contact with family members and wash hands frequently and uh, whichever the surfaces are exposed with the phone key or uh, mobile phone we should clean that all surfaces with the disinfectant solution uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind attention those this is a brief uh, overview actually of uh, you know how we should take care of ourselves in hospital um, thank you very much everyone for listening to me uh, peacefully and um, just as i said uh, you even contact me on my mobile number that is uh, 9099111133 for any questions thank you very much thanks everyone